Okay. Exactly each paragraph. Yeah, yeah. We went through it one by one. Okay. This is Eric Joseph Larson and Susan Carol Wood. Uh, and we are visiting today to talk about this letter that we were sent from Mr. David Drexler. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say was, in our world and in our city, it may be rare for attorneys to value truth and justice over perhaps their clients. However, if you are such an attorney, I think you will be siding with us in this matter. First thing, uh, I don't live at 1202 South Stanley Avenue. Is that correct, Susan? Uh, yes, it is. That is my address. Right. I live, I'm in the duplex upstairs, which we rent from Susan under our rental agreement. Uh, this office represents Rebecca. Okay. You're using, uh, we'll compliment him a little bit here because you're using a lot of uh, beautiful language here that's not necessary. Um, legal actions, disturbing developments. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I, you know, well played, my friend. That's that's fun, but it's not true. In, in receipt of your email, June 13, attached a letter of the same day, purportedly signed by Miss Wood. Miss Wood is here with me right now, and we have your permission to record this uh, response. What is it? Um, did you sign? You you fired the attorneys. Uh yes. Right. Yes. Was this it's my? Was this Eric saying? I don't want Suzanne and Rebecca and Din on this, or was this Susan saying that? You know. uh, well, Susan, that was my choice. Right. So, not not Eric. Uh, terminated services, go for blue, blah, blah, blah. We do not accept the legitimacy. Uh, sorry, she fired you. She hired you. She fired you. Mm -hmm. it's not, this is not my doing. Uh, okay. Why did we notarize the letter? Um, because you need to accept it. You know, they need to accept it. So, we demand that you accept the termination letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's addressed. Uh, we didn't accept the list. Uh, da, da, clear and convincing evidence. Uh, fraud, okay, what fraud, where, how? You're accusing me of fraud, vulnerable, elderly, okay, vulnerable. Uh, elderly victim, again with the uh, wonderful, colorful language, exerted undue influence, what? Uh, my own financial gain, where's my financial gain? She was vulnerable, what fraud, check it out. Okay, following chronology, by the way, which is somewhat uh, skewed. Usurped your position of trust as a mortician mortuary director, defraud Miss Wood of <laughs> I've never defrauded, excuse me, have I defrauded or robbed you of any assets? No. Okay, uh, I haven't yeah. defrauded or robbed anybody of anything. Yeah. Um, February 15th, Susan's, yes, this part's true. Uh, as Morticia, yes, I am a funeral director, acting in fiduciary capacity. We don't know what fiduciary means, except that it's Suzanne's job title. We'll uh, have to get back to you on that. <laughs> Discover the following facts. Bereaved and reclusive. Okay, Susan Wood is not reclusive, but she spent a year and a half going through a very challenging time and so she did lose some social context but she's not reclusive or introverted or extra shy or anything like that uh, so this is an inaccurate characterization of her personality mm -hmm. inconsolable uh, no actually Susan was very strong she didn't shed one tear she was stunned and then she was in a very intense season of her life as I've heard it said you know the world stops and then the world's on your shoulder and then the world starts again, right? The yes. Drunk on the profundity of loss. That mm -hmm. definitely is true. Uh, Miss Wood was experiencing extreme emotional stress. No, nah, but you, you kind of, they're characterizing you as extremely weak and vulnerable and like just out of it, you know, like a puddle mm -hmm. of tears. That, that wasn't the case at all. No. No, I no. Was... No, uh, extremely vulnerable, Miss Wood. Say. Oh, Miss Wood is wealth. Now, again, this is Mrs. Wood, okay, mm -hmm. not Ms. Um, she is a widow. Uh, her sister Julie and she were born Ray, uh, but you've got a typo that carries through all the way from the front to the end. And just as a note, you should always be careful, especially with names. Miss Wood was experiencing no, no, ex 
extremely vulnerable. Eh, she was somewhat vulnerable, and I would say, especially in the first 10 days or so, when she was signed up with Rebecca and Din and everybody, and we started moving her in that direction to try to help you, mm -hmm. you were much more vulnerable than you are now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the irony of this is, if she's in a state of drunk, Drunk on the profundity of loss, and now she's sobered up, and she's saying, well, what the heck did Eric help me sign up for? Because I signed as a witness on her trust and on her will, and we were the only ones there. No one explained to us the gravity or the depth of what we were signing her up for. And so, see, that's unfair. Mm -hmm. um, following chronology, fiduciary, so what is wealthy? Uh, wealthy, uh, we were worried, actually, when we first met you, do you have enough to afford Woodlawn? Because we originally set up for Woodlawn, and that's why the bill was twenty-four thousand five hundred. And so, no, there was no presumption on February fifteenth that you were wealthy. Mm -hmm. Never been to your house. Never said, "Oh, it's a nice house," or "It is or it isn't." Which we could address some other time. How nice it is or isn't. Mm -hmm. But uh, wealthy, uh, no. Our family and what we do, we actually have uh, are comparably wealthy. So mm -hmm. it's not. We're not. Okay. We ain't poor when you ain't rich, in com mm -hmm. you know, comparatively speaking. Mm -hmm. I would call you well taken care of. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, Julie's deathless, who's alone. No, she wasn't really. You. Neighbors took you out for dinner oh, yeah. to cheer you up. I, we were there. Um, All the neighbors just totally descended, you know, yeah. on the house and they, you know. People were supportive. Anything, it wasn't yeah. that she's alone. Always calling, always coming here, yeah. we're going, you know. Yeah, so, so this isn't, a, um, and this neighborhood is very well connected. We've met many of the neighbors here. Mm -hmm. They wanted to meet us. They want to know who we are. Mm -hmm. um, so no, that's not the case. This is a mischaracterization. Mm -hmm. Julie's death, the superior fiduciary petition. Okay, no. Opportunity to solve your own desperate financial straits. <laughs> if this year, our business did better and has done better than we ever did in the history of our company. And I've been in the funeral business for 12 years. And so we had no desperate financial straits when we met Susan. Uh, we're doing just fine. Uh, which is borne out by the fact that we freely and quickly gave over the $24,500 um, to Gold Fiber Lou because we thought, you know, we just need some more, more people to help us on the situation. And, uh, <clears throat> okay. Desperate financial straits. That's inaccurate. I could send you QuickBooks or we could sit down and visit that if, you know, you kind of have to decide to be on our side, not, mm -hmm. you know, these, they're not, this isn't good. The time you referred to Susan, legal consultation, unaware of your ulterior motives and fraudulent intentions. Okay, again, that's just silly. Um, I didn't have any ulterior motives or fraudulent intentions. I didn't have desperate financial straits and had no motive whatsoever to try to hijack Mrs. Susan Wood, as you're accusing me. Uh, uh -huh. Although I'm not offended, I'm not personally offended by this because I think it's just how you play the game or something. Um, we had more money than ever. Uh, why would I refer Susan to attorneys or doctors if my intent was underhanded or fraudulent or ulterior in any way? The first thing we did, we took you to Dr. Ivy Love. Mm -hmm. In fact, she's a funeral director and, and she, you know, was like, well, I think she's mostly okay, you know, mm -hmm. and um, then we took you up to Goldfarn Lou. And the point is, if I was trying to fraud you or scam you, I would make sure you'd have limited contact with others. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd try to restrict you from, from anybody finding out that you even existed, uh, which is not the case. Mm -hmm. In fact, all of our assistants, you know, Katie, Kyle, myself, gosh, Gary, everybody, you know, there's plenty of witnesses to this whole thing. Susan, okay, very uh, Okay, uh, next page, gosh, it just goes on and on here. I don't know. We've made extensive notes on every single page here, and the real truth is, David, <laughs> that um, this, Goldfarb Blue, God bless them, Suzanne Bassani, well, she's another story. Um, we'll see if God blesses her, but... 
they've really misrepresented the entire case to you. And I would recommend that you do not take this case. Um, yes, I gave them the $24,500. Yes, uh, I, I, we found out later. Um, we took, I took you to multiple attorneys. We're trying to find second and third opinion, figure out, you asked me, what did you sign me up for, Eric? Mm -hmm. What did you help them sign me up for? Mm -hmm. And you want me to explain it because you got the letter about the deed in your house mm -hmm. and a letter about going to court for probate and all this. Mm -hmm. And anyway, what should we really focus on here? Mm. Susan and Julie both had their wishes articulated in 1999. I hand delivered that trust document to Rebecca on Rebecca Goldfarb. Somewhere here where you just failed to mention that that was my purpose of my visit. July 1, 2016. In person, I delivered her the 1998 trust, which was photocopied by her assistant in full and because she kept asking about it. And we've never withheld that. Literally, I don't have a lot of time. I'm usually busy nonstop. Can you attest to that? Uh, yes. Okay. He's um, a very busy person. So we're working, we're serving clients. We, we're not trying to withhold anything. Uh, so we've addressed that. I mean, gosh, there's so much here. We didn't take advantage of anyone. <clears throat> uh, as per the... Create a will. Yes, we did create a will, um, naming me as not executor, I don't think, but beneficiary. Uh, I have never claimed to be an attorney at any time or an attorney. In fact, if something I set up has a typo, I'm easily willing to correct that. Potential interference. Oh, we never interfered. We never tried to misdirect the phone lines. A week or two ago, from around June 10th or so, um, upstairs, Julie's phone got canceled. And then the lines were ringing upstairs from this one and that one. So it wasn't that we were answering, uh, what do you call it? We're trying to block you, you know, anybody off from communication, period. They just shut down her phone. Right. So, uh, so when we plugged in our phone into the jack, yeah, it got it's a separate jack of, that's yeah. connected to this one. Uh -huh. And when they called, Susan was with me. We were at the spa. So <laughs> we, were, we weren't home. <laughs> we needed to relax. I'm not in the okay. I am not an attorney, and I've never said I was. Um... What else? We're not, you know, we're not. Potential interference, which for your director, ethical standards. I, uh, no. Uh, we kind of have addressed this multiple times, but uh, over time, we became friends. And Susan is now our landlord and our friend. And so, you know, the idea that I exploited my potential relationship as a funeral director and hijacked her vulnerable state to trick her into something that's totally wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what else? Conversion, you have wrongly converted Miss Wood's property. I don't, where, when, how? I don't have any of her property. <laughs> so, um, ah, this one, um, if, you know, any work that Goldfarb Blue did and any work that Suzanne did that was in accordance with trying to do the right thing for probate when they understood that that was the right thing, okay. Um, the timeline, though, it doesn't match up. On uh, June 3rd, we asked Susan, Suzanne, to come over and tell us how much, what did, you, what, what did we sign up for, how much are you going to get paid, and what do you do? We asked her those questions. Her purpose for coming over was to give us more understanding on what the heck did you sign up for? Mm -hmm. When we looked at some of the court filings and the documents, for example, one in particular stuck out like a sore thumb. It was something like affidavit. It said, I, Susan C. Wood, declined to administrate my sister's estate and I assigned that whole task over to Suzanne. 
that document was never shown to her. I mean, we, mm. I was with you when we visited the attorneys. They never explained that. They never explained the house would be deeded. They didn't explain the process of probate. They did None of these things were explained and basically didn't know what the heck anybody was signing up for. They handed me a trust and my friend and said, can you go over to Susan's house, get this notarized right away? And we're like, okay. Mm. Yeah. They didn't say, have her read it, make sure she understands it. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you were handed this trust, which was called the Susan and Julie Ray Trust, Mm -hmm. uh, March something, 2016, and it was never explained to you Mm -hmm. what you were signing. Uh So that's fraudulent misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. What we thought we set them up for was we thought Suzanne was someone who would make sure that nurses come when she's starting to need nurses. And things like that. Literally, we thought it was more of a caregiver agreement. Mm -hmm. And I simply trusted them. Big mistake. Mm -hmm. Uh, My reputation is on the line because I referred you to them. Mm -hmm. And then they left you in the dark. You're calling me, Eric. Can you explain this to you? I'm like, I think you should talk to the attorney. You should talk to them. I can't explain it. And so I did my best to try to explain what I can. But of course, we'd have to visit other attorneys. Of course we would. Mm -hmm. And every single one just doesn't seem like they really want to help. You have wrongfully converted. I didn't convert anything. Abuse, where, when, how. Mm-hmm. When have I abused anything? Anyone? Opposite. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's just so much that we could address here. For example, you saw a doctor, we won't mention his name, mm-hmm. um, at this point because he said, you know, I'm not sure I really want to be on this and I'm not going to yeah, make this an official thing right it. now, but... You scored a 28 out of 30 on a cognitive assessment. Oh, yeah. And he said, she's fine. Mm -hmm. Here it says, on June 4th, 2016, you confirmed in a text, Mrs. Ms. Woods, again, typos. Mm -hmm. Mental health condition was extremely compromised in your woods, was suffering from her. This is all just garbage. It's completely false. This is the opposite of what the doctor said. Those are total lies. Right. It's the total opposite. I'm taking this one. Um, we did get you checked for some medical needs. Uh, you were never incapacitated. That's mm-hmm. false as well. No. Um, never okay. incapacitated. Um, what else? We invited, June 6th, we invited Suzanne to come over and justify her existence. And we boldly said, do you remember what I said? Mm-hmm. I said, just, I actually said, justify thine existence here. Mm-hmm. And I was just being fun because, look, um, why do people got to be all tricky and get all serious and, you know, accuse me of a crime and, you know, mm-hmm. like, calm down, mm-hmm. chill out, <laughs> and, like, look at reality. There's 1999 trusts. They were created ages ago. I delivered them in person. You deny that they exist now. Mm-hmm. That's a bald-faced lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, that Rebecca says that I came and showed up at Goldfire Blue made further unsupported, unspecific. I, I didn't make any accusations of impropriety. I simply said that Suzanne lied straight to my face, mm-hmm. which she did multiple times. But that's how she plays the game. I mean, it's not that I'm judging. Uh, yeah. I understand. People will manipulate and lie. They, they'll play their cards as close to the edge of the table as they think they can get away with, uh, right? Yeah. In accordance with the law, most of them. <laughs> So it's not like I'm judging, oh my gosh, you, you lied to me. But the thing is, she, this whole thing is shady, mm-hmm. like front to back. So that's the problem. Anyway, the reason I went there to Goldfarb was simply to hand deliver. And she photo her assistant photocopied it. They did receive it. They have the trust. Mm-hmm. So don't tell me the trust doesn't exist, okay, because that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Sorry for my French. Okay, July 1, 2016, appointment, okay. Uh, Suzanne. No, 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 okay. On June 30th, 2016, it says, you made unsubstantiated accusations against Suzanne Basani indicating that she mis- she made misrepresentation. No, 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 no. I said that she cashed Julie's CD. Susan got a letter in the mail saying, Julie, thank you for um, cashing your $134,000 certificate of deposit or something like that. That's what we're referring to. If I made a typographical error in a text, I apologize. But that's what we're referring to. Mm -hmm. And that was what prompted us to visit the bank. And when we visited the bank, they said, I'm sorry, we can't help you. 
Someone came in earlier with court orders and documents and gave Julie's death certificate about an hour ago. Mm-hmm. And they confirmed her name was Suzanne Bassani. So mm-hmm. we called her from the bank. Mm-hmm. And we asked her, did you deliver death certificates? I, I, and I she said, that when we were trying to I'm, find that. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm, I'm not sure I can answer that or something. And mm-hmm. just did bullshit. Like, look, if you're going to be sketchy with us, do it good. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do it good. Like, I remember. Ridiculous. And we were looking for that. Or, the, you know, the death. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, um, ah, anyway. Yeah, oh, okay. gets involved and throws everything you know, out there. Little, 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 little. Yes, indeed. Um, Susan and I uh, had a talk, and we have a recorded conversation, again, with permission, uh, about this. She wanted, the way that they set the trust up appeared to be like, pledging 65% of everything to multiple charities and to one charity in particular, which was highly recommended by Din Lu, which she kept pushing the percentage higher and higher and said, this is our friend's charity and they're going to help you out and um, you can meet them if you want. And to me, that smells like kickbacks. Sorry. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, what does it sound like to you? Can we just, why don't we just give a little more to the kittens? And this is like really hitting you on those kittens, right? And then it's, it just says kitten rescue. I mean, it's so nonspecific. I mean, hello, ASPCA is in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, there's an address. Like, that's what the intention of Susan and Julie has been from the beginning, was ASPCA. Mm-hmm. What does the thing that we set up, that we renewed the, or updated say? It said 50% to Eric Larson and 50% to ASPCA. Why Eric Larson? Why? Why did you want me to benefit from this? Because I was the one helping you? Or I mean, how would you describe oh. that? I mean, you, you know, you said, Eric, I want you and ASPCA. Yeah, I think it's because, because you... Go ahead. Yeah, Eric, just, you know, when this whole thing started with you, like, you know, uh, you helped me or, you know, I could always confer with you on, mm. you know, different matters, you know, that were happening and all with Julie's death. Okay. So, however, I'm not addicted to that. I don't need houses or dollar bills. I don't need anything because, um, just to emphasize, the love of money is the root of all evil. I, (laughs) I don't follow money. Money is not my king. Uh, So, there you go. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, whether or not ASPCA gets the whole thing or we, you indeed share uh, some benefit mm-hmm. with us by your own free will, mm-hmm. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I care about you by, and by extension, therefore, your house and your, you know, the things you have um, beca- by extension. Mm-hmm. But if I thought it was unethical or wrong for me to benefit in any way from you, guess what? I don't want to benefit. Does, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. ASPCA all the way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you want to do it that way, I'm cool. Because then I think we just get ASPCA and make sure they understand all of this. And mm-hmm. they can, you all can duke it out with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, not, no harm, no fall on my part. Mm-hmm. Uh, just realized that the 1999 trust pretty much would kill anything that I set up new or they set up new. Like, this is, like that's what we want to let ride to the best of our ability. Mm-hmm. We did put an amendment on the 1999 trust that you set up, mm-hmm. which says things like, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on attorneys. Mm-hmm. I don't want to pay fiduciary fees. Uh, things like that we put in there. Um, excuse me. What else we got here? Oh, uh, boy, what else? What's important? I mean, we could really spend a lot of time on this, but I don't see why we need to. Um, We have gone through it meticulously together, and we're trying to hammer some of the most important points. Mm -hmm. I never replace. Oh, this is important. The we never. Where is it? Let's get to your demands and accusations in your final thing. (laughs) Number one, I have not done anything illegal. I have not intentionally done anything unethical or that could be construed as unethical. Uh, I have not intentionally conducted in any conflicts of interest. We literally became like family. We've been looking out for each other. Um, Yes, on April 18th, our lease ended. We were looking for a new place. No, we were not in severe financial duress. I'd like to see the texts so I can review them. Um, 
have we sometimes feast or famine in our business? Go doing great, not doing great the next week? Yes, once in a while. Uh, we have bumps in the road and we need people who owe us to pay us. So I can, you know, I can corroborate that. But uh, it's unfair to characterize us as desperately grasping onto your coattails, Susan, to, you know, save us from the street, we're homeless, because uh, that's inaccurate. <sighs> okay, under, <laughs> a lot of uses, too many uses of the E's here, okay? Exigent, extraordinary, agrarious, mm -hmm. you know, be careful. <laughs> what a bit of redundancy there, I'm not, Sorry, I'm not teasing yeah. you, man. Improper illegal conduct demanded here by me that you cease and desist from any further actions. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cease and desist from perpetrating further fraud and financial elder abuse upon Mrs. Woods. All right, Mrs. Wood, bro, not Ms. It's, Wood, sorry. Okay. Yes. Number one, I never perpetrated any fraud or financial elder ab abuse upon Susan Carroll Wood, so I can't cease and desist because I never started it. <laughs> okay? Cease and desist from acting as Miss. I never claim to be an attorney. Uh, again, this is something I have to review, but if I unintentionally had some kind of clause in a thing I found on a PDF online, dude, that is, this is not due to me falsely claiming to be an attorney. It simply would be a typographical or a mistake or an accident, which I'm willing to correct. Um, what else we got? So I'm not unauthorizingly practicing law. Um, we soon revoke durable power of attorney, maybe, uh, okay, um, maybe, maybe we could do that. Mm -hmm. Last will and testament, maybe, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, I think we're going to let the 1999 trust ride, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the will, I'm not so worried about that, so this is negotiable. Mm -hmm. We soon revoke, replacement of fiduciary, okay. We never tried to replace Suzanne. Uh, that's something they said that we claimed, and we have Suzanne quoted as saying, Eric wants to replace me as fiduciary. Uh, no. Never wanted to. We revoked that whole trust. Susan wrote with her own handwriting, I am revoking the trust that was, that was created with Suzanne, Rebecca, and Din. I revoked the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So to say that Eric is trying to replace someone on that is inaccurate. You know, I'm not trying to be Suzanne here. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to take her place. We revoked the whole dang trust. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that thing. Mm -hmm. You set up something that was not clearly explained to you, and you want to turn it back. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Yeah. What else we got here? Immediately vacate Miss Ms. Woods. Mm -hmm. Again, your typos, residents. Yeah. We don't, we are living upstairs. We have a rental agreement. We are tenants. Mm -hmm. She's our landlord. Okay. So, we're not in your home. That's inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Disengage from any professional advisors you retain without proper legal authorization. I don't have any professional advisors that I retain without proper legal authorization. Okay? Cease and desist. <laughs> Forthwith from all contact. I think that... Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. I don't know a Ms. Wood. Woods. Sorry, I don't know a Ms. Woods, so yeah. I can't cease and desist forthwith from all contact with someone yeah. I don't know. I do know a Mrs. Susan Carroll Wood, yeah. and I think she has the right to decide who she has contact with. Not you, or any of you. Like, where's your authority? Where's your power? I think that this is fraud, misrepresentation, and this isn't okay. Maybe I'm saying a lot of words that are, are scary or something because everybody wants to take words seriously. So I'll be careful with my words. I think that this letter is poison. I think that you're poisoning the well of Susan's heart against me. And I think that it's an unfounded, unsubstantiated attack that has no documentation and no evidence. And I think that it's ridiculous. And there are parts that made me very angry. Uh, especially the bald outright, the, just the lies. So that I know is a tort called deceit. Okay, so and you, you know, you gave me advice to lawyer up. Well, you better believe we'll lawyer up. But I, I hope you just get a sense of this thing, man, because uh, it's not gonna. It's, this is not what you think it is. This whole letter, there, unfortunately, Goldfarb Blue is guilty of malpractice, and they're misrepresenting themselves to you, David Drexler to get you to represent them, and I wouldn't take this case. I would sit with us and sue them. You know what I mean? 
Like they're seriously mm -hmm. contacting this guy to attack us. Mm -hmm. And 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 he he may be one of those attorneys who says, you know what, truth and justice matter to me. So I'm not going to take this case from um, Rebecca and Suzanne. I'm going to research Suzanne in particular for how many endless lawsuits she keeps filing and, and how many people she sucks dry and leaves in a dust heap and how despicable and disgusting that is. That it's just disgusting. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> where are we at here? Improper authorized legal representation. I'm not an attorney. Never compl mm -hmm. and never claimed to be. Is Eric Joseph Larson an attorney? Uh, no. Has he ever Imagine claimed to be knowledge. your attorney? Uh, no. Uh, general power of attorney is 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 to represent someone. Why did we set that up? Because you're retired and you don't want to have to pit bull people. Uh -huh. You're a laid back and calm person. Is that true? Ah, uh, yes. Right. Uh -huh. And you don't want to have to pit bull a bunch of people no. <laughs> during your retirement. No, yeah. Now, if that was, if, if setting this up was, constituted something that was, uh, you know, too much, or like if it was excessive, or this is like wrong, you know, mm -hmm. like then we can correct and rescind that, I, you know, that's mm -hmm. flexible. Uh, what else? Improper um, caretaking arrangements will be secured through Suzanne Bassani. Suzanne Bassani is, was a trustee of a revoked trust that Susan Wood revoked. Mm -hmm. Suzanne Bassani has no right whatsoever or authority to visit this home, uh -huh. to have anything to do with Susan, yeah. uh, to arrange caretaking. Now, what do you mean caretaking? Um, Susan here uh, drives. She shops at Trader Joe's. I do uh, everything. She pays my her house, bills. My she pays the gardener. Everything. everything. I take care of the house, everything. So, so we're That's caretaking we're arrangements. Here. We're not caretakers. That's another thing they misrepresented. We were never and are not, and we're never interested in being caretakers. I mean, we're not caretakers. So, uh, I mean, is there anything I missed here? Yes, they paid us. Yes, Goldfarb paid the mortuary. They also paid Olivewood Cemetery. Yes, they did a lot of good stuff. But it just, they left her in the dark. And they, the, the, the trust thing, though, they, they gave to me and my friend to come over here and get notarized. And we're like, okay. I mean, that's not good practice. You don't have a, a, a funeral director who's just like helping you out. Why did I do it? I, I did it because I thought, well, we're building a good relationship with people we trust. We're helping them. They're helping us. You know, I thought it was just a good thing. And I trusted them. I don't even know what the word trust meant before all this. And I'm sitting here with Susan just trying to puzzle through it. They left her in the dark. They didn't explain the, the things that were happening. When she was in her most severe state of shock, instead of signing her up for what we understood was, here, this is gonna take care of you when things get rough. They got, boy, they got, you know, as much as they could out of her sister's estate and her, and they even set up an, a trust for her mm -hmm. while she's alive you know, and has capacity. It's fair to say that I was worried about you, okay? Mm -hmm. Over 